So this week on Tuesday, the Supreme Court will hear oral arguments on the next landmark Second Amendment case. So let's talk about what's going on. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think it's time for the Supreme Court to strike down more gun control laws, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online college that helps students learn the skills and techniques they'll need to be successful in the firearms industry. So if you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, SDI might be a good option for you. To find out more about SDI, you can visit the website links down below. And thank you again to SDI for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be discussing an important Second Amendment case that will be argued this Tuesday, November 7th, in front of the Supreme Court. That means that the Supreme Court will hear and rule on the new Second Amendment case before the end of their term. The case is called U.S. v. Rahimi and deals primarily with the question about who are the people as mentioned in the text of the Second Amendment. In this case, the government was actually the ones who sought Supreme Court review because the Fifth Circuit recently ruled that the federal prohibition on gun possession for people subject to uh, things like domestic violence restraining orders is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. In that critical decision, the Fifth Circuit three-judge panel analyzed the federal law 18 U.S.C. section 922 G8 under the Supreme Court's recent 6-3 decision in that New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. Bruin requires that a government's restriction on the right to keep and bear arms must have a historical basis or analog that dates back to 1791. If it does not, then the law must be struck down as unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has granted review to this case and will hear the case this week and then decide if they want to strike down this federal law prohibiting the possession of firearms for anyone with a domestic violence restraining order. This decision also has huge implications for other cases because we will get further clarification um, essentially by the Supreme Court on how the Bruin analysis should be applied going forward in similar cases and other cases. This case will also be critical to outline who are the people under you know the Second Amendment and who are the people protected by the text of the Second Amendment. The primary question of this case is whether Mr. Rahimi, because of that domestic violence restraining order, does in fact fall outside the class of the people afforded Second Amendment protection. So that is one of the big questions that's gonna come out of this case, but then there's gonna be a lot of other things that are going to be answered. Now, the facts around this case are not great, and I wanna state from the outset, Mr. Rahimi is not a good person. There are plenty of other things Mr. Rahimi should have been convicted and arrested for, but that's kind of not what's at play in this case. So between December of 2020 and January of 2021, Mr. Rahimi was involved in five shootings in and around the Arlington, Texas area. On December 1st, after selling narcotics to an individual, he fired multiple shots into that individual's home. The following day, Mr. Rahimi was also in a car accident. He then exited his vehicle after the accident and then shot at the other driver's vehicle. Then in January, Mr. Rahimi fired multiple shots in a Whataburger restaurant when his friend's credit card was declined at that restaurant. The officers in that Arlington, Texas area identified that Mr. Rahimi was a suspect in multiple of these shootings and they obtained a warrant to search his home. The officers executed the warrant and found a rifle and pistol in Mr. Rahimi's um, room and then on contact with Mr. Rahimi, Mr. Rahimi admitted that those were his firearms and he was in possession of those items. He also admitted to the police department that he was subject to an agreed upon civil protective order, which was entered in in February. And again, that was entered in by a Texas state court. And that was involving the alleged assault of his ex-girlfriend. That protective order restrained him from harassing, stalking, or threatening his ex-girlfriend and also their child. The order also expressly prohibited Mr. Rahimi from possessing any firearms. A federal grand jury on review of all these issues ultimately found that Mr. Rahimi was in fact possessing a firearm while under a domestic violence restraining order and therefore he violated federal law 18 U.S.C. section 922 G8. Now early in his case he did bring a challenge to that federal law and he challenged it as unconstitutional. However, he lost the initial argument since the Fifth Circuit's precedent had in fact prior found that under the interest balancing approach that federal law was constitutional. He then appealed that decision up to the Fifth Circuit, who again found that that type of argument was foreclosed because of their precedent. But then the Supreme Court issued that critical and landmark Bruin decision and reaffirmed that text as informed by history and tradition is the proper analysis when you're looking at these types of two-way cases and you should never use interest balancing. So that kind of reversed all the things that the Fifth Circuit had done prior with their precedent. And then the Fifth Circuit panel in the Rahimi case withdrew their prior opinion and then re-reviewed the case and ruled under Bruin 
that their precedent was no longer valid and that this specific federal law, which prohibits the firearm and ammunition possession by someone subject to that domestic violence restraining order, is in fact a violation of the Second Amendment. In reaching their decision, the Fifth Circuit panel stated that the government fails to demonstrate that Section 922 g 8s restriction on the Second Amendment fits within our nation's historical tradition of firearms regulations. The government's proffered analogs falter under one or both of the metrics that the Supreme Court articulated in Bruin as the baseline for measuring relevantly similar analogs. Obviously, that decision did not sit well with the government, so then they sought Supreme Court review. They filed a writ of cert to the Supreme Court. The government actually decided against going to the Fifth Circuit en banc panel because prior to the Fifth Circuit en banc panel and likely still is not in the government's favor, so they decided to bypass that and go directly to the Supreme Court. And then at the end of the Supreme Court's last term, Right at the end, when they were doing some cleanup orders, we received news that the Supreme Court did grant review to this case. This is significant, not just for 922 G8 and that specific law, uh, which is in question in this case, but this decision will have broader implications to all other cases and will likely be cited in all other 2A cases going forward. The decision here by the court will have to apply Bruin and that analysis against 922 G8. That means we will get further language on when gun control laws like this meet the text and history standard, which was outlined in Bruin. Also, this case and decision will center around who are the people, as stated in the Second Amendment and the text of the Second Amendment. And this Tuesday, all of this is going to come to a head. The Supreme Court will hear oral arguments on whether this federal law is in fact unconstitutional under their recent Bruin decision. The question presented to the Supreme Court, which they have granted review in and they will consider, is whether 18 U.S.C. section 922 G8 which prohibits the possession of firearms by persons subject to domestic violence restraining orders violates the Second Amendment on its face. So there are some really interesting arguments made by Mr. Rahimi and his attorneys in their brief, essentially saying that this type of federal law does not fall in line with Bruin at all, though there is no historical or textual support for this type of restriction, and that the founding generation would never have allowed this type of nationwide categorical ban on the possession of firearms, of ammunition, and similar items, especially based on this kind of loose civil protective order. Now, also in their brief, the attorneys here tried to limit the situation to just the issue at hand. So a lot of the other factual stuff about the other incidents that Mr. Rahimi was involved in um, did not really involve in this case. Yes, he is a bad actor, but some of those things did not actually align with this specific issue. Um, a lot of that stuff was thrown into this case to show how bad of a person Mr. Rahimi is and kind of to try to just muddy the facts and make this seem like a really bad case. This is very important because this is not just an as applied challenge. That means that the Supreme Court will not just decide if the federal law is unconstitutional as it applies to Mr. Rahimi. Instead, the government's question presented to the Supreme Court is an actual facial challenge and a facial challenge to the federal law. That means that the Supreme Court will decide if the federal law on its face is unconstitutional for everyone, not just Mr. Rahimi. So this is going to be a very interesting and landmark case going forward. This is a critical case, and that's why I think a lot of people are excited to hear what the Supreme Court says during this you know, oral argument coming up this Tuesday. The anti-gun side wants to use this case as a tool to place limitations on Bruin to stop a lot of the Second Amendment legal actions that are happening right now. And they're trying to stop a lot of the wins that we've got. Uh, we've got various wins by circuit courts after Bruin. We got rulings uh, essentially like on controlled substance prohibitions and the possession of firearms if you're under controlled substances and then also nonviolent felon restrictions. So we've got a lot of wins post Bruin and the government hopes that a positive ruling in their favor in this case will help to kind of constrain Bruin. Now, I think this Tuesday, we will also get some further insight into how some of these justices want to apply Bruin and what they believe about Bruin going forward. There have been some question marks surrounding some of these justices like Justice Barrett, Kavanaugh and Roberts. The or arguments will be potentially very helpful to show us how these specific judges want to apply Bruin going forward and what kind of their two way sentiments are. This is also important since the Supreme Court has just granted review to the Cargill bump stock case, which again challenges the ATF's bump stock rule uh, or arguments here will help us predict maybe what the justices currently feel about Bruin and the two way topics in general, and could also help to frame some of the briefs in the Cargill case going forward. So again, very significant, not just for this issue at hand in this specific case, but all of their two-way cases going forward. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. If you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to feel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Also, I want to mention that you might want to double check your subscription because a lot of people have been unsubscribed from YouTube. Uh, so just double check that. And then also, 
If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel because about 60% of all viewers are not subscribed. So help us to grow this community. And if you find value in these videos, make sure you share them out to your friends who are also pro 2A, who enjoy guns, uh, who want to be part of this community. Help us to share and grow this community so we can get this information to more people. But regardless, thank you guys so much for all of your support. And never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.